Hello, my name is Johannes Ulrich and I recorded this video to show you about a new feature we just added to this site. The reason I think this feature is really exciting is that I feel our data is best used to add context to your logs. So we wanted to make it easy for you to add that context using our data. All you have to do here is you take a snippet from your logs and it should work in more or less any format and just paste it in here and then click on click here to parse. And what you'll see really quickly of course, depends on the number of IP addresses that you're posting, a uh, risk rating that's being indicated with a color. Let's of course go to this bright red one first. If I hover over uh, this IP address, I will then see, well, some of the context that I was talking about. So for example here, that uh, this particular IP address received tons and tons of reports in our DShield database. We are really, what we mostly trigger on here is how many targets are reporting for, for this IP address. We do actually adjust this risk rating somewhat for, uh, IP addresses that are only reported by one submitter. So for example, if we have one submitter that has a class B network and is now sending us 65,000 reports for this particular IP address, we still would not exceed the risk rating of two, which would put this in the yellow zone here. Now, there are a couple other reasons why we may reduce the risk rating. Let's look at the second IP address here. And what you see here is also a good number of reports. We had 15,000 reports, meaning 15,000 packets essentially being blocked. And these reports came from 12,000 different target IP addresses. However, there's still a risk rating of zero. And we did this because this particular IP address is a name server for the .arpa top level domain. We do see a lot of false positives from popular sites like these name servers. And as a result, again, we cap their risk rating. Very similar here, uh, the next IP address. The next IP address, now we didn't get a lot of reports here, only 33 reports from four targets. That in itself would actually also still result in a green color here or a low risk rating of probably one. But you get additional information here that uh, this IP address is associated with Google, which is an Alexa rank one site. So the most popular site, according to Alexa, we do figure in the Alexa rating and again, cap the risk based on how popular the site is because we do get a lot of false positive in these cases. So there's a lot of additional information you get beyond just the color. If you want to go beyond that, you can also right click here and then open the link in a new window. This gets you to our IP info page, which does have more details about this particular IP address. For example, at the Alexa data, this happened to be the mail server for Gmail or one of the Gmail mail servers. So it's actually associated with a number of high ranking domains. Uh, not a lot of other data here, but also if you would have some of these external threat feeds like our SH scanner feed, our 404 feed, all of that will be visible in this little pop-up and uh, give you more context to your data. And with a simple right click, you can then get all the details we have down to, if I click here on a number of reports, you actually get uh, the reports and actually, uh, this is a real nice example here because you notice the source port here is 25, which is uh, the SMTP port. And uh, that's of course very typical for this behavior where we have a mail server, it's a legitimate mail server, but sometimes it's responding a little bit slow. So uh, the connection gets marked as invalid by the firewall. And that's when you get here, these particular ACK push packets, ACK fins and such that are being reported as blocked by the firewall, but these are really false positive. So uh, really quick here with this feature uh, to help you out and give you context for your logs. A couple things about this here. 
In order to get more than five IP address resolved in one lookup, uh, you will need to log in. That's in part to prevent some flooding issues that we may have uh, with uh, this uh, particular feature. Privacy wise, we try to keep it well as good as possible. Our site, by the way, does not include any Google Analytics or anything else uh, from third parties. Now, uh, the only thing that's being sent to our API from this feature is the actual IP address. The entire log is kept on your browser, in your browser, on the client, and is being parsed in the client to minimize the amount of data that you have to send to us. If you do see any problems, you can send us the entire log, and that's what this little uh, debug dialog is here is for. Now, one thing I would like to ask you to consider, if you really like this feature, the reason this feature works is because people submit their logs to us. If you like it, uh, please consider submitting your own logs to make this feature better. Home firewalls are perfect for that. If you have a Linux firewall at home, if you have PFSense at home, relatively easy to set up uh, the submission process. We don't need your secret data from work. Uh, actually, home firewalls give us very good data. Also, if you have some websites and you would like to send us your 404 logs, uh, private websites and test websites really work uh, quite nicely for that. So please consider that to give something back to the community. If you want to learn more about how to do it, well, uh, just uh, send me an email here, you know, just uh, use our contact form or uh, just uh, use the howto.html page which uh, does have details about uh, different uh, firewalls and how to configure them for submitting logs to us. Thanks for that and hope you like the feature and waiting for your feedback. We are still very actively working in particular refining that risk score.